Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Monday, March 6th, 4.37 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we are in an uptrend. You can see over here on the trend gauge, leadership showing bullish. We've had uh, plenty of leading stocks act well, break out, not go to the moon, but uh, certainly considering the market that we had in 2022 in the beginning of, uh, or I should say February 2023, uh, leaders held up relative to the indexes and uh, no significant damage done uh, today either. And I'm really talking about the 21 over 21. Uh, the G6 also showed good action last week, lagged today though, will uh, discuss that when we get into the charts. As far as the five major indexes go over the three time frames that we track, not going to bullish uh, for the short term. Ugly reversal on the uh, S&P and the NASDAQ. Now, it was the third day up. Typ typically, uh, it's very common to see some profit taking on a third day up off of a low, uh, but the reversal was ugly and small caps lagged all day long, small caps and mid caps. Um, not the kind of day that we want to upgrade uh, from a neutral to a bullish. We'll take a look at the charts and you'll see what I mean. Medium term, 50 day moving average. We're still uh, bullish there. All five of the major indexes above the 200 day moving average, the slopes of the line flattening out, trying to turn up the leader mid cap. That slope has clearly turned up. So what happened today? Like I said, third day uh, up off the low, Thursday and Friday. Uh, Thursday, we held the 200 day moving average, had a positive reversal, strong follow through on Friday. Uh, early follow through today on the big cap indexes, uh, looking pretty strong, but we topped late morning, midday, and then uh, just bled lower toward the close. Little bit of a bounce the last 15 minutes, but. Uh, at best, I'll give it a neutral, even though we've got the three big cap indexes closing positive. Mid and small, as I said, lagged badly all day long. Uh, G6, this is our 6 ETF growth composite down 0.94% on the day. The S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow all finished positive by about a tenth of a percent, but uh, well off their highs. Mid caps down 1.23%, Russell 2000 down 1.48%. The S&P 600 small cap was even worse, down 2.3% on the day. Global diversified 60-40 stock and bond down 0.09%, same return on Grotection. Uh, our flagship strategy, we'll take a look at the tail of the tape and charts of interest after we dive into the key indexes that we uh, discuss on every video, the five major ones, and then uh, the key ones that you need to keep an eye on because they have an impact on what's going on with stocks. We'll start off here in the S&P 500. What we do at Revere is active management. Uh, we participate in uptrends, particularly when we're above all three of the moving averages. Uh, the time frames that we track that's the green line the 21 day the red line the 50 day the black line the 200 day we get below the black line where we spent most of uh, 2022 uh, you can see here this is when we protect capital we put a, a strong emphasis on being defensive and that's because every one of these 13 bear markets back to 1970 they all occur the big losses occur once you break the black line the 200 day moving average on average from the high till you break it is about negative 12%. That's a really a normal pullback within uh, any particular year on the, on the indexes, but it's when you get below uh, the 200 day moving average and you may have uh, geopolitical or socioeconomic headwinds like last year, recovering from the massive amounts of money injected into the system for COVID. So here you've got the COVID low down 35 and a half percent. We recovered nicely from that. Uh, but then we got a hangover and dropped uh, 27 and a half percent in, in uh, January to October, 2022. So feast and famine, we wanna participate in the feasts. We want to uh, stock some 
cash away to survive the famine. If you're interested in an approach like this, reach out to me, DonnaRevereAsset.com, or my partner, Dan Stewart, DonnaRevereAsset.com, or call us at 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. So we came into today uh, with the heaviest allocation to stocks and ETFs that we've had uh, going back to January of last year uh, when we started noticing the top and uh, starting started lightening up. Uh, and this is mainly because not only are we above the three time frames that we track, but leading stocks were participating. Uh, we had two nice rallies last year, one in July, one in October, but the leaders just weren't there. It was mostly bounces on the indexes and, and charts just starting to repair uh, the damage made to them, trying to put in bottoms. Uh, during this period, we started putting in the right side. Uh, late December and then uh, January, we started seeing some uh, right side, some stocks come up the right side. We did a nice digestion in February, held at the 200-day moving average right where we needed to on the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. Uh, and during this period, some stocks started to break out uh, and with emphasis Thursday and Friday, uh, lots of leaders acting well today. Uh, a lot of them taking a break, giving up some of their recent gains. Stocks don't go straight to the moon as much as we'd like them to, but uh, you got to pause at uh, at some times, and especially with all the cross currents that we've got going on. Uh, let's take a look. Well, here's a five minute chart. You can see the gap up the trend higher to this 4078 area. And we just kind of went sideways there for a little bit before selling off into the close. Uh, this is a sharp contrast to, I'm gonna bring up IWM where you can see, you got two nice days here also, Thursday and Friday, but this was just ugly all day until a late bounce uh, into the close. Uh, gonna do some digging tonight to see uh, if there are any particular sectors that were really underperforming uh, that drug it down so swiftly and it w wasn't limited to growth or value. Let's show uh, IWO here. This is the growth portion also selling off and IWN, the value uh, portion selling off even harder for that matter. So uh, do notice it looks like we found a bottom here. Uh, in the last 15 minutes, and that corresponded with the lows, the base that we were putting in Friday. So uh, we gave back a lot more on uh, the small and mid cap charts. Here's mid cap growth. Uh, here's just the broad mid cap. Uh, didn't give back as much on mid caps as we did on small. Let's take a look at this. Uh, I uh, S. It is SLY. It's actually, there's two of them. IJ, IJR and uh, SLY are uh, small cap growth or uh, small cap indexes. Look at this actually lower uh, than Thursday's low. I didn't realize that. Um, man, this is, this is, uh, Worse, as I said, worse than I expected. So this is the S&P small cap. Now these uh, these are quality companies. They have to be. They've got to be profitable to get into the small cap indexes. Um, so uh, definitely didn't like the action there. Uh, let's go to back to IWM, which is uh, the Russell. This has more junk companies in there. You can see it didn't come anywhere near uh, as close as the S&P did to undercutting. Uh, Thursday's bottom. Uh, let's flip to QQQ now. Is NASDAQ 100. Uh, again, bounce at the 200, reclaim the 21 on Friday along with the S&P, uh, higher high, and then a reversal. Uh, basically topped late morning, uh, early afternoon, same way as the S&P, and then sold off into the close, but this looks a heck of a lot better than uh, the small and mid caps. Here's the Dow. Uh, held up much better. Uh, you can see making the day three higher high, but did reverse trying to get it closed back above the 50 day moving average, uh, still above the 21. So uh, back to the daily, here's mid caps again, closing below the 21, IWM uh, closing below the 21. So that's why we couldn't go to, uh, although we did get the second close above on the NASDAQ 100, 
and the S&P 500, second close above the ugly reversal on the big caps and the weakness on the small caps, uh, keeping us from upgrading uh, to green there across the short term 21 day exponential moving average time frame. Uh, also want to note, it was really the FANG stocks that were holding the market up and definitely that didn't include Tesla, which had uh, another weak day. But uh, here are the uh, QQEW, that's the equal weighted NASDAQ 100. That was down 0.26%, uh, down worse than uh, the QQQ, which was down 0. 0.1, which was up 0.11%, and then the broad S&P 500 down 0.48% versus a positive gain of 0 0.07 for the S&P 500. So uh, it, it was a case of the bigger stocks held up much better today. Uh, the smaller your market cap got, the worse off your performance was. Let's flip to the dollar now. As you know, dollar's been having a big impact on stocks. Uh, week during the day improved as stocks came off in the afternoon and then just kind of sideways into the close. Um, it has broken down from overbought. That's a positive sign for stocks. We want dollar weakness to continue to be a tailwind for stocks. Let's look at the VIX. Uh, this was up a little bit today, but it really had come down hard. Very tight action. On the VIX here, it's positive that it's under the 50 and the 21 day moving average and under this 20 level. That's a tailwind for stocks. Let's flip to bonds now. Bonds, uh, I'm gonna go to TLT first. Bonds started out uh, with rates coming down. You can see TLT up, that means rates lower, but all throughout the day, uh, rates rose while the uh, yields uh, or while the price, the TLT, came lower. Same thing with IEF. This is the 10-year. Uh, gapped up initially, which means rates gapped down and then sold off uh, basically all day. Let's take a look at the yields. Here's the TNX, the 10-year yield. You can see it gapped down, finished at the highs of the day. TYX, the 30-year, gapped down got stronger all day. So let's go back to the daily charts. We've been talking about this island top here in yields. Uh, it's something we want to keep an eye on. This strong bounce off of the 21 here in yields got us back into TBT. Kind of as a hedge, if yields uh, stop going down and continue to go higher, and a lot of this is going to depend on Jerome Powell testifying on Capitol Hill over the next two days and then the jobs report on Friday. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, events, headline events, quotes, statements, misinterpretations. A lot can happen over the next, uh, over the rest of the week between economic data and what Powell is saying. So um, we'll see how it plays out. As for right now, our take is that we didn't like the index action, but there was no significant damage to leading stocks. So there's TBT. Let's go to the broad bond index, they all ended up uh, lower in price on the day, which means yields went higher. Junk bonds actually ended up positive, but again, these move uh, more like stocks, corporates, LQD, uh, down on the day. Again, that means uh, rates higher. Let's flip over to gold and silver uh, with the dollar being down on the day. Uh, gold also down on the day. Note it was up uh, four out of five days strongly. So maybe just taking a one day break there. Gold stocks uh, also up five days straight, taking a little bit of a breather, down 2% on the day. Silver uh, down a percent on the day. Again, up four out of five days, taking a breather. And uh, Bitcoin, B-I-T-O. Bitcoin uh, slightly positive on the day that gap down um, last uh, Friday, still based on that Silvergate bank uh, potential bankruptcy. So those are the major indexes that we track. Now let's get to the tail of the tape and um, some uh, stocks that we'll take a look at. You can pause it here. I'm just going to hit the highlights. Day count from up two to up 
up up to with a consolidation day, and that's being generous. This is a I don't keep this separate for all the indexes. It's kind of uh, what happens uh, across all five as an average, and um, that's a generous average considering what happened to the mid and small caps. S and P second day above the eight and above the twenty one. You want to get uh, in early on these trends if there's going to be a trend because it's it's quicker. Your stops are much quicker. And um, if we're going to trend up for 10, 15, 20 days, the way we do sometimes above the 21, uh, you don't want to be chasing as you're, if you're late in the rally. As far as expectations, we're negative below the 200-day, neutral between the 200 and the 21, positive above the 21, no damage, still positive, despite the negative reversal uh, and the weakness, because this is this is expectation is mostly based on the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 100. Uh, no violation of the various levels. Uh, you can see what was weak, what was strong today. We own everything in blue. A couple of other charts we want to take a look at today. Uh, the news, China projected 5% GDP over the weekend, which was lower than expected, and that hit a bunch of commodity names, which had shown strength over the prior couple of days because uh, China reported strong uh, economic numbers in the middle of last week. So these Chinese headlines, uh, economy being so big, it can really hit a lot of areas. Uh, note, you note here how weak oils, uh, pick, coal, XLB uh, was. That's all related to uh, the China GDP. Biotech weak, uh, retail weak. Uh, so what did we do in-house? With the third day up when we got extended, uh, we trimmed a little bit of SPXL. Uh, the thought was to move that into either mid caps or small caps looking for a bounce, <clears throat> but they stayed weak most of the day. So uh, that's what that uh, capital is earmarked for is one of the smaller mid cap or small indexes. And then we bought TBT with the bounce uh, of yields off the 21 day moving average. So bottom line for today, mid and small caps weak all day. Big caps made a day three high and then reversed lower. Uh, but no damage, no significant damage done to any of the leading stocks. There are a couple I'm going to point out, though. Uh, I already showed TBT. Melly, this is probably the strongest uh, of the names that we had on our watch list or in the 21 over 21 list that we're considering adding. Uh, just didn't add to it today. Didn't feel comfortable adding on the third day up with a gap up on your third day up. I mean, you're just asking for trouble, putting money to work under that environment. Uh, so didn't take action, but Melly definitely a standout today. On the other hand, Elf, which has been a standout for a while, uh, showing weakness, did bounce at the 21. But what I don't like about this is how uh, this had the uh, what looked like a shakeout on 3-2 and closed at the high of the day, then made a higher high, but ended up negative on Friday while the rest of the market was strong. Now coming right back down to the 21 again. This should have bounced here and continued higher or held up higher in the range. So minor concern for ELF here. It may need to build a base. Note the volume higher today also. And finally, after one, two, three, four, five weeks coming off of overbought. So it may just be time for it to uh, build a base. Uh, LNG, another stock that showed strength last week. Uh, and again, Beautiful reaction on earnings, four very tight days inside uh, the body of that day, then two days up uh, with the news out of China last week, and then with the news out of China over the weekend, what China giveth, they can take it away, LNG gapping down, uh, Nat Gas had a big negative down day. Uh, ugly reversal on this, still holding above the 21, but uh, down almost 5% on the day. Uh, pick. Let's also uh, show this at uh, three a gap up and two follow through strength days on the China moon, uh, news last week. Pulled back right to the 21 today, down 2.5 percent. XME uh, negative day today. Also after uh, some nice strength last week, and these aren't broken. They may just be profit taking, but uh, what looked like a tailwind turned into a headwind with that. Um, news uh, out of China. So uh, First Solar continues making a day four higher high today. It did uh, start out better, reversed to red, but ended up finishing positive on the day for the fourth 
straight day. Uh, Tesla continues to show some weakness, uh, closing just below the 21 day today. Remember, this uh, gap down on Thursday was on their uh, big media day or Tesla celebration, uh, whatever day they they called it. I don't even remember at this point, but a uh, little bit of strength on Friday, but couldn't get above the declining eight and this 200 level. Uh, we're looking for, it, maybe it just continues to go sideways here and the 200 comes down. It's close to it. It's right around 220 now. This 217.65 prior high, if we can bust above that, it'll be a break above the 200 and above that high in this tight flat base that it's forming. Uh, that would be the ideal scenario for Tesla. Let's see, what else do we uh, want to look at? Uh, TMDX continues to hold up very well. This is a portfolio holding tight inside day today, not giving uh, any gains up. Uh, Palo Alto did not get added to uh, the S&P 500, so a little bit of a disappointing action today, but it's holding right on uh, to that rising ADMA as it should. Uh, ANET had a decent day today, following up uh, on its bounce off the 21 last week. Uh, uh, Iridium, smallest, second smallest position we have in the portfolio, hadn't really got going. Uh, since we added, but it was being accumulated late in the day today, undercut and reclaimed the 21. This 60 looks like a very solid level uh, for IRDM today. We want to see it get going and stop going sideways because going sideways while the market has gone up, you can see the relative strength declining here. We can only put up with that for so long. That's going to wrap it. As always, love to hear from you. The email is donnerreviereasset.com. The phone is 855 Real Wealth. Remember, it's not how much you make in the markets. It's how much of that you can keep. Reach out to us if you have any questions. And with that, I'll wrap up Monday, March 6th. Tell them like it is here at Revere, just the facts. Thanks for listening and have a great day.